Okay, the camera, I, I don't see the camera well. So the camera is, oh, okay, there we go, okay. So just somewhere near where I am? Yeah. That's close How do you engage with the students? You still look at the camera while engaging them? I do, I do, I look at the students sometimes, I look at the camera sometimes. And are you in the dark the same way all the time? I'm sorry? Are you in the dark all the time? No, I usually have uh, lights here for the students. You do see the students then? So I can see the yeah. students. Okay, yeah. okay, so it's not as dark as I would see you right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you can, see you can still see this really well for engaging them. Yeah, okay. And, and you know, we don't even really need the lights off. If you look at the monitor over there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even with the room lights on. It's still fine. It's still fine. Yeah. It just you just pick up a little bit of the reflection off the glass. So if you look at the monitor over there, you see that top. Yes. Reflection. Yeah, the little glare. Yeah. Okay. So okay. That's great. All right. Are we, are we rolling? We're rolling. All right. Uh, is it Rufet or Rufet? Rufet, yeah. Matthew Rufet, point mama, take one. All right, guys. So today we are going to learn about some basic organic chemistry. And so organic chemistry is basically contains the word organic. And organic contains several elements from the periodic table. Namely, we have carbon, as far as organic, hydrogen in organic chemistry. And then mostly we're going to see also nitrogen, and oxygen. And these elements can be found in the periodic table on the top right hand side. And so the basics of organic chemistry is understanding how do these elements combine in order to form chemicals that we have around us. Oxygen, nitrogen that we're breathing every single day or uh, some compounds that are emitted uh, by cars, for example CO2. These can be formed using basically those four elements. And there's something that needs to be understood is how do these elements form bonds. And so it's all about the electrons inside them that form bonds. So can you can imagine electrons as a little, usually, dot kind of like floating around. And the idea of making a bond is to have a couple elements, like carbon, and we'd like to share a bond with hydrogen. So they would basically come up and combine their electrons together to form what we call a covalent bond. And covalent means you have electrons from each outside shell of each element to come together and form a new bond. Now, I've mentioned... Okay, I have a question. Yes. How big is an electron? An electron is very, very small. Uh, if you take an electron, if you compare it to a stadium, uh, an electron would be like a, a grain of rice in a huge stadium, like the giant stadium in San Francisco, for example. So very, very small, very tiny compared to the atoms. Yet, they are the one making the, um, the chemistry, the way we talk about in organic chemistry. Okay, so we have to basically go back a little bit and understand, well, how the electrons are arranged around the atoms. And so in order to do that, we have to figure out, well, how many electrons are found in each um, element. So if you were to draw the kind of the periodic table, this is my take on the periodic table, and my writing is not the best, but it gives you an idea. You have rows and columns here, and each element are assembled here, and they were organized by a specific number in, called the atomic number. Okay, and the atomic number basically defines how many, so the definition of this is how many, protons, and most likely electrons, so or electrons, an element has. So if we go back to our main element for organic chemistry, it would be carbon. And carbon, if you look at the periodic table, you see a number six on top, and that would be the number of protons as well as the number of electrons. And so what we're going to see is basically if we organize these electrons around the atom of carbon, we can understand how we get to have dots around that are used for bonding. But don't we call it carbon-12? Yeah, that's a good question. So carbon-12 is basically due to the number of neutrons as well. So elements, they contain three things to go to the basic level. So elements, like carbons, contains carbon, contains, uh, you see the number 6 and 12, so they contain 6 protons, in this case 6 electrons, and they contain um, six neutrons. So we need to back up a little bit. You need to understand that an element would be made of what we call the nucleus, kind of represented by a sphere, though it's not really true. It's not really a sphere, but kind of a sphere. And inside you have the neutrons and the protons, N plus P, and for neutron, P for protons. And around it, you have some electrons around in different orbitals. I uh, don't want to go too much in details, but you have some electrons floating around. So the first orbital, the shell, looks kind of like a sphere, and you have other sphere. And then you go to more complex structures that look like, like this. 
And long story short, all the electrons are here, so electrons will be in there, E negative four electrons, and then inside the nucleus you have nucle uh, neutrons and protons. So to answer your questions, carbon-12 comes from the fact that you have six plus six, six protons, uh, sorry, six protons plus six neutrons right here. That's the 12. So that's the idea of um, electrons around. And so when we organize this, the core of organic chemistry is understanding how are the electrons organized in the uh, shells around it. And so in order to do that, we have to figure out the order. And it's not random. We call this quantum uh, because each electron can take a specific energy to be at a specific place. And that is going to be pretty much similar for every atom. But what will change is the number of electrons um, around each atom. So for carbon, like I mentioned, we have six electrons. If we go back to understanding hydrogen, we would find that hydrogen has one electron. And eventually, you're gonna, you can figure out the same thing for nitrogen, which has seven electrons, and oxygen, six electrons. So, we are uh, not going too much into quantum chemistry, but we can understand how things are organized. And so, for example, carbon. We know that we're going to have, in different shells, the first levels, we're going to have two electrons in the first level. That's going to be the first level. And these are going to be closest to the, nu the, the nucleus, closer right here. That's going to be the first level. And then we have the second level. And so in the second level, we're going to have <coughs> four electrons. And these are the ones we're going to use around carbon to make some bonds in chemistry so that we can form compounds. We don't care about the one they're too close to the nucleus, too much attracted to these positive charges. They're like too close to it, too tight to do something. However, the one on the outside, the four electrons here, are the ones that are further away, and they're like free to do some chemistry. So we put four dots. We like to put them north, east, est, west, and say, oh, look, carbon can make four bonds, and then we're ready to go with this and form compounds. And if you do the same thing with nitrogen, the same order, by the way, applies, just probably different energies. You would have seven electrons, so you say two on the first shell, and then five on the second shell. So I would go one, two, three, four, five. And that nitrogen is not going to use these two electrons. They're going to be friendly. They're going to be on the side, kind of like, don't want to do too much right now, but we're going to use these to make bonds right here. And same thing with oxygen, but right here, six. So you'd have two and um, keep going. So one, two, three, five, and six. And uh, by the way, this is eight electrons for oxygen. I'm sorry, I made, a, I made a mistake. And there you go, you have two bonds for oxygen. So that's the basics of organic chemistry, and with these, basically, electrons, we can start making compounds. All right.